Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 7th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our journey through the story of the Bible, and we're going to move quickly from this point to each major story. And in chapter 23, we read of the death of Sarah. In chapter 24, Abraham sends his servant to get a wife for his son, Isaac. In chapter 25, we see the death of Abraham, and we also read of the twin boys that are born unto Isaac, Abraham's son, and Rebekah, Isaac's wife. In verse 21 of chapter 25, it says, Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And so she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Notice, two nations, not two children. These will be the father of nations, which is the fulfillment of the promise that God gave to Abraham that through his seed many nations would be born. And so God continues and says, Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So the eldest son will serve the younger, and the descendants of the eldest son will serve the descendants of the younger son. And in verse 27, it says the boys grew. Now Esau was a cunning hunter. He was the eldest son. He was a man of the field. But Jacob was a plain man. He was dwelling in tents. So Esau was a man's man, and Jacob was not. And for this reason, in verse 28, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, because he was a man's man. He was a hunter. But Rebekah loved Jacob because he was a dweller of tents. He was a homebody. He spent time in the home, not out in the field. And so one day after a long hunt, Esau comes in and he's extremely hungry. And so he says unto his brother in verse 30, feed me for I am faint. And Jacob, the younger son, Esau's little brother said, sell me today your birthright. I will feed you if you will give me your birthright, if you will give me your inheritance. And so Esau in a state of famish said, behold, I'm at the point of death. What shall my birthright do to me? And so Jacob says, swear to me this day that you'll do this thing. And Esau sold his birthright unto Jacob. Now remember, God had said the older will serve the younger. So we see being played out here the prophecy that God said even when the children were in the womb. Now Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils and he did eat and drink. And he rose up and went his way thinking nothing about what he had done because he despised his birthright. He considered it worthless. He was more focused upon the moment than the latter reward. And I think there's an important lesson that we can learn there as the people of God, friends. We don't need to be so focused upon the life that we're living that we forget about the eternal ward that's promised to us if we're faithful and obedient unto God. That's why Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but yet lose his soul? And he would do this because he's more focused upon the temporary pleasures and entertainment that this world offers rather than the promise. Because the promise seems so far away and we want to live in today. We want to drain life of all of its pleasures and all the things that it has to offer us. But that is the way of the natural man, not the spiritual man. The spiritual man stands upon the promise of God and understands that there is a price that must be paid in order to obtain that eternal promise. So we are told Esau considered his birthright worthless. 
Well, from this last verse in 34 of chapter 25 to chapter 27, a lot of years go by. And so it begins by saying, it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, in other words, he was about to die, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, behold, I am old and I know not the day of my death. Therefore, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, go out into the field and hunt game. Come back, prepare me a great feast, and I will bless you with the blessing that you have inherited. But in verse 5, it says, Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son. And so she went and told Jacob what her father had said. Now, Jacob knows that the birthright belongs to him because Esau had sold it. And so they devised this great plan to trick the father while Esau, the eldest son, who has sold his inheritance, his birthright, is out in the field hunting in order to prepare this great meal for his father, Rebekah, loving Jacob more than Esau, devises this plot to trick her husband Isaac. And so in verse 15, it says, Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau. She put skins of a goat upon his hands because Esau was hairy. And so she was trying to make Jacob as much like Esau as she could. She put the hair upon the skin of his neck. She cooked the meal exactly like her husband Isaac loved it and sent Jacob unto Isaac for the deception to begin. Now in verse 20, it says, Isaac said unto his son, Jacob, how is it you have found the game so quickly? And Jacob says, because the Lord thy God brought it to me. I didn't have to hunt it. And Isaac said unto Jacob, come near, I pray thee that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. So even though Isaac is blind, he perceives that there might be an attempt to trick him. And this may be because he is aware of what Esau did in selling his birthright unto Jacob many years ago. And so verse 22, Jacob did go near to his father. His father felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And so he did not discern that it was actually Jacob rather than his eldest son, Esau, because his hands were hairy, just as Esau's hands were hairy. So he passes his blessing on to him. Now, once this is done, it cannot be undone. And so in verse 28, Isaac says unto Jacob, may God give thee of the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, plenty of corn and wine. Notice this in verse 29, let people serve thee. This is what Rebekah was told when the twins were still in her belly, that the eldest son would serve the youngest son. And we see the fulfillment of that prophecy right here in verse 29. Nations will bow down to thee. You will be Lord over your brethren. Your mother's sons will bow down to you. Cursed will be everyone that curses you and blessed everyone that blesses you. Now it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and Jacob had just left the presence of his father that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. And so he cooked his meal. He took it unto his father and he said, Father, bless me. And in verse 32, Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who are you? And Esau said, I am your son, your eldest son. And Isaac began to tremble very exceedingly. Why? because what had been done cannot be undone. The blessing had been given to Jacob, the blessing that belonged to Esau. But Esau considered it worthless. Back on the day he had traded it so foolishly, yet now he counts its worth, but it's too late. And friends, there are many that are alive today who consider themselves followers of the Lord Jesus. But all of their focus, all of their attention, all of their pursuits of life are in this life. And there will come a day when an accounting will be demanded, but it will be too late. And they will see that they have scorned, that they have considered worthless their promise. They have traded their eternal blessing for temporal pleasures. Let us be very careful not to do that, friends. And so Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said unto Esau, I have given your blessing to your brother Jacob. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. 
And he said unto his father, Bless me, my father. Have you not reserved a blessing for me? My brother has tricked me twice. Aptly has he been named. You see, the name Jacob means deceiver. And Esau says, not only did he take my birthright, but he's taken my blessing, not understanding that they're one in the same. And so in verse 37, Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him your Lord, your master. You are going to serve him. And all of his brethren have I given to him for servants. And Esau again said unto his father, hast thou but one blessing, my father? And he began to bitterly weep, realizing what he had done in selling his birthright. And Isaac says unto Esau, Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven from above. You will live by the sword. You will serve your brother. And because this is the only blessing that he received, it says in verse 41, Esau hated Jacob. And he said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. After my father dies, I will kill my brother. Now, Rebekah hears these words, and she sends Jacob off, thinking that over time, Esau will forget his anger, and the two can be reunited in love as brothers. And in chapter 28, verse 1, Isaac called Jacob. He blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Do not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, of these pagan nations. Instead, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, my mother's father, and take a wife from there, from the daughters of Laban. And may Almighty God bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee. May he give thee the blessing of my father Abraham, and to thy seed to follow, that you may inherit the land wherein you are a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. Now we're going to see this fulfilled in the days of Moses. And this is approximately 400 years before Moses is even born. And so behind this story, interwoven within is the plan of God being fulfilled just as he so desires. But notice what happens next. When Esau saw that Isaac in verse 6 had blessed Jacob, had sent him away to his family in Padanaram to take a wife from there, not to take a wife from the people of Canaan, that Esau looked upon the daughters of Canaan, those daughters that did not please Isaac his father, and out of spite, Esau went unto Ishmael. Now remember who Ishmael is. He's the unpromised child of Abram, who will later become the father of the Muslim nations. And so he goes unto these pagan nations out of spite for his father giving Jacob his blessing, which was only his fault, not Isaac, his father's fault. He took daughters of the wife of these pagan nations. And this is why the Bible tells us in the New Testament that God loved Jacob and he hated Esau because Esau's heart was evil. Esau's heart was set against the plan of God. Esau's heart was rebellious. Yet even though Esau has evil intentions, God's plan is being worked out with perfect detail. But as we close this morning, how many of us would rather pursue the pleasures that each day offers us rather than suffer as the people of God through self-denial, sacrifice, self-abasement, and absolute surrender unto the Lord? Friends, let us be very careful not to sell our birthright for the temporal pleasures that this world has to offer. Well, friends, I pray that your journey will be blessed today as you walk faithfully with the Lord Jesus and that you will diligently press forward in your journey seeking to obtain the prize that lies before you. Now, as the Almighty wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.